Oil is undoubtedly one of the most important commodities throughout the global economy. Today we will discuss why gas prices can rise even as oil is falling. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Obviously, you see it at the pumps where the prices are so high, yet oil prices are down significantly. Let's get into a few points today on why exactly this is. Crude oil prices haven't been this low in nearly six and a half years, but motorists in some parts of the country have seen a significant rise in prices at the gas pump this week. So obviously, you may be feeling this as well. And what we have here is, according to Market Watch anyway, drivers can thank refinery troubles for that puzzling development. That's right, point the finger at the refineries, it's all their fault. But I saw this as the prices were dropping here in oil, and we saw that you know they generally do lag behind the oil prices the gas prices don't go exactly intact because of course it has to go uh, along with the refineries but it didn't quite make the same drop that oil did and why it's because of speculation now of course i just gave away the whole video but that's what we're getting at here so there's much more in here but I mean, think about it, over $5 a gallon in California, we're talking about expensive gasoline, yet the prices are so low in terms of oil. Let's move on to this here. I have a ridiculously jam-packed episode here. So this is more of a general uh, general information here. Crude oil prices are set globally through the daily interactions of thousands of buyers and sellers in both physical and futures markets and reflect participants' knowledge and expectations of demand and supply. Pretty simple, it's just like any other commodity. In addition to economic growth and geopolitical risks, other factors including weather events, inventories, exchange rates, investments, spare capacity, OPEC production decisions, and non-OPEC supply growth all figure into the price of crude oil. Okay, so that is fairly accurate, I would say, in a general theme, if you wanted to just look at it overhead view. Yes, that's how it's done. So what exactly happened? Why did it go from such a high number to you know $40 a barrel, let's just say, and it was done in such a short period of time? Well, obviously there are other factors that are not discussed here. Let's move into this. This is Canadian, but it applies to the whole world. A question experts have been asking themselves in recent months is what consumers will do with their gas money. Oil sharp drop quite, une uh, quite expectedly led to initial fall in gas prices, which led to all kinds of predictions about the dividend would create for consumers to spend elsewhere. So that's what they kept saying. I brought this out on the channel as soon as it was coming out, talking about the fact that people would have so much money to spend. The economy is going to go booming because people are just have this extra money to throw out there. The problem is that we are not. Instead, some have suggested that people are saving more of the funds to help chip away at their bulging debt load. So they're either going to save it in the bank or they're going to pay down debt with it. Yet it looks increasingly as though we're plowing the excess cash largely into what we were before oil's crash. Gas. Think about that for a second now. Oil prices declining. They claimed that this would be a great stimulus to the economy, yet what are people spending it on? Gas. So here is the fraud that we have been exposed to, and we are seeing it going on right now. Okay, one more here. OPEC, everyone knows OPEC, this is out of Bloomberg, could potentially boost crude oil production to 33 million, uh, 33 million barrels a day, the most ever after international sanctions are removed against Iran amid a global supply glut, according to the OPEC representative. What they're saying is that they have too much oil. Now, where did all this oil come from? I mean, well, they knew that they were pumping at a certain amount. Then we had Saudi Arabia said they would not cut back on their pumping. And now you have OPEC saying they're going to print at a uh, pump at a record amount. What's going on here? 
this to me doesn't make any ounce of sense. OPEC would reduce their production should they see the prices at this level because if they don't make a certain dollar value, then they will not pump as much because they want to keep the prices up. That's the whole point of OPEC is to basically provide a profit to the nations who pump the oil. They're saying that they're at, they're at a surplus of 3 million barrels a day. This could be true, but how much is actually being used, how much is actually being stockpiled, these numbers, I believe, are completely fraudulent. Now, let me talk about this from my book where we're looking at the commodity as a whole. Oil, obviously, what I said here, although there are many forms of alternative energies, we have oil still being the most important energy source on the planet. You can't deny that. The way they use it up, it goes very, very fast. So when they say they're in a glut, I don't really understand where that comes from all of a sudden. So if there was a glut, the glut would have been there years ago. But it isn't like that. It was just all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, now everything's bad in the global economy. All of a sudden, we have a glut. It doesn't work like that. You don't just find a glut out of nowhere. Things don't just react that quickly, especially when you're talking about millions and millions of barrels. They don't just you know, found, find them in some sort of warehouse somewhere. It doesn't work like that. So that's what I wanted to get to from this quote from my book. What I would say here is that just like any other commodity, we have gambling, essentially. They use these commodities, they use the futures markets in order to profit from this rising and falling. If it's beginning to crash or beginning to dip a little bit, they find a way to short it and they use this as an opportunity to profit just like any other stock or anything else. Just like the bond market, just like all of these other markets that are out there globally, they use commodities, let's say oil in this case, to run up the billions and the trillions of dollars that they are gambling with in these derivatives markets. So this is no different here. That's why, despite the fact that oil has dropped, gas prices can rise because they can simply make more profits doing it this way. They don't need you to be have more wealth in any way possible. They want you to be in debt. And this has been a program that they have been applying successfully now for quite some time. They have introduce the new methods for you to be consistently more and more poor. They've been doing so using debt in order to get you there. Debt is the system of control that they are applying to you and I, and it has become successful. Oil is just one of these different ways they can do that. They put they can bring the price of oil down so that they can do what they need to do on their end, but you at the gas pump, that's where it affects you, and they need to put you into debt. It's working very well. California over $5 a gallon, that's a very serious number there. Now, I just want to go through a very quick uh, bunch of articles here as we connect this all together. Cash, and this is not my quote, this is out of the Financial Times, cash is 100% reliable in times of crisis. It's in periods of panic where a solid financial system has to prove itself. In a crisis situation, the typical demand for cash typically rises sharply. The reason for this is trust in real currency. I do not think that cash is real money, but of course, this is what they're saying, that basically people flood over to cash. Now, why? Because they are afraid of the monetary system as a whole. So at least with cash, they can hold it under their mattress. People aren't necessarily that sophisticated sometimes, and they don't believe in other real assets, but at least they understand the principle that you need to be able to hold on to something. They don't know that there's nothing backing it. There is no commodity, whether that is gold or what have you. There's nothing behind it, just the government's promise to pay, and that has simply failed. But anyway, this is all about basically Greece and what's happening here with the uh, printing of currency over in the European regions. 
Look at this, Ecuador's new virtual currency is a source of pride and worry. You can see that the individuals here in Ecuador seem to be adopting this new digital currency, although it is very small in comparison to the total amount of people, but it is something that has been beginning to take off simply because the people don't want to have to deal with uh, this inflation level that they're having, and obviously a wheelbarrow full of cash isn't exactly the most uh, easiest thing to carry around quite cumbersome so this is actually trading in line with the US dollar I don't know if it'll stay like this but what we have is basically what I would like to say turmoil within the currency markets that's all as a result again of the gambling that they are doing it's supposed to be more stable there isn't supposed to be such a wide fluctuation they can't uh, really engage in these currency wars if it wasn't allowed to in the first place. Okay, new mega protests across Brazil against Rousseff. I'll just read this highlighted portion complaining of corruption in a weak economy. Hundreds of thousands of Brazilians went out into the streets Sunday to call for the ouster of President Dilma Rousseff. This is what will go on in every major city around the world. We will have people that are upset, that begin to riot, that begin to engage in this activity. I do not condone this at all. I am simply just telling you exactly what's going to happen. When you have oil prices rising dramatically, whether that's through a hyperinflation whether that's through some sort of derivatives manipulation it doesn't matter you will have people that are upset because they can't afford the things that they used to before let's look at this last but not least we have this individual the reptilian i mean the queen poised for record after rallying the troubled monarchy what we have is the queen of canada the queen of australia the queen of everywhere and, you know, just reading that uh, upsets me. In the 1950s, declared Queen of Canada. Nobody could say a single thing. There was no protest to be involved here. But regardless, here they are. And, you know, it was very troubling to me to understand that, you know, people are rallying around the queen, around the monarchy, even though its significance is completely outdone. What exactly does this monarchy do for the people the fact that remains is that it does nothing there's nothing there for the people within the monarchy it is no different than a big bureaucracy a big corporate government that we are having this imposed upon us this is what it happens when you let something bigger than the people take over you have problems you have squandering of the money you have corporations which use our money to gamble and they are doing so completely and they're doing so well let's just say if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up and last but not least if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. You can actually flip through the book. If you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature, which allows you to flip through the book and see if you like it. Take care.